blue dooley on a slightly chilly Wednesday, February 23rd. Got loaded up, we're heading to Ammon, Idaho again with a, what I'll call a fairly standard load. It's not ridiculously long or really, really wide. We're right at 11 foot 5, I believe. I checked this morning, but I forget the exact number. We're under 12, that's all that matters. Got everything strapped down and uh, tied up. I got some video of that. I didn't do any talking during that because I'm not sure how I'm going to cut it up or if uh, I might speed that footage up a little bit. Because thrown straps over a load, you, you kind of know how that works. So, not going to show you all the, all the boring stuff, but got a little video on the forklift getting loaded up and uh, running with the Insta360 camera again today. I think here in a little while, I'll flip you around. I'm going to try uh, the time lapse mode on it just to kind of see how that works to get on the road. Alan was telling me that uh, the wind chill is supposed to be minus 20, minus 30 up there today. Yeah, it's a little chilly. I got my winter gear with me. I got my bibs on, my heavy coats over in the passenger seat because I don't need it while driving and I hate wearing, I hate wearing that uh, heavy winter coat driving a truck. The hoodie isn't too bad, but the heater in this truck works real good. It's either just right or Death Valley in August. There's not really a lot of middle ground there. But the sun's kind of peeking through. I don't think we're supposed to get much for snow. It's cold wind, so that's all right. We're heading down. It's going to be a beautiful day no matter what. We'll catch up to you later. I'm going to jump in with some voiceover about the plug and the trusses. This is our biggest forklift we have. The Caterpillar rated at 20,000 pounds. I have a fork extension on it, which the extensions are about 14, 14 and a half feet long. You don't need them all the time, but depending on how long the trusses are and how many webs and uprights are underneath them. It isn't always feasible to get the forks positioned so you don't need them on these loads. I want to say these span about 38 feet, not counting the tails. That's from wall, outside wall to outside wall. And I never pulled my truck up far enough for it, so I'm going to slide her over a little bit. Blocks underneath it, forks out. And we'll get a runner underneath it too. These uh, big forks, like big forklifts, like this, take a little getting used to, especially when you're picking up something as long as a truss pack. Uh, as you know, an inch of movement down at the tire translates like to a foot or more, depending on how high you have to pick them up and how far out they are. So it, it does take a little getting used to moving the larger packs around with these forklifts. And then anything over about 45 feet, 48 feet in length, uh, we usually use two forklifts just because they bow so much. You kind of risk snapping them if they're not banded together really tight. So it's just it's just easier to save yourself some headache on those longer trusses to just use two or four lifts and pack the truck underneath it. Like I said, the load's 11.5, 11 11.6, 11 so you can see how much more fork sticking out underneath the uh, load there. And I'll just put one underneath those to, uh, that way the fork extensions don't get caught on that top cord. <coughs> Turn the camera back on. Two by... 
think this was a 2x6 runner. It might have been a 2x8. But this keeps these uh, the uprights and the webs Ooh. from uh, snagging on those rollers when you're unloading them. Alan grabbed That's the probably good. Where he's up there getting it position. So I'm going to crawl underneath here and overlap him a little bit after I whack my head. There's a fork there. You'd have thought I'd remembered the fork was there since I'm the one that put it there. But these are just long enough that a uh, 120 foot board isn't going to cut it. I'll skip over here, put my flags on. And then we're just about ready to go. We got the load secured down. I didn't film throwing straps because throwing steps is boring. Not that, uh, nailing a flag to the truss packs and riveting entertainment. Just part of the process of getting a wide load set up to go down the road. I put one, one at the front and then, because these are so long, I'll put one at the back. And then I'll get my signs on and my uh, regular oversized loads and flags at the front and the back of the trailer. <laughs> now we'll get the oversized load signs out of the toolbox. I keep stuff in all of my toolboxes. A little messier than some of the other guys. Skip ahead a little bit here. I've got my flags so I can put them into. And, uh, I like putting my flag in with my rear sign because I use the bungee cord to wrap around it so it doesn't fall out. Juan and Alan are getting his truck loaded now that I've pulled out of the way. I pulled out of the way before. But, uh, I strapped, but he's getting loaded. Rudy had to wait for one more truss to get built for his load, and then he was out here, so we were all out of here pretty reasonable time. Took, well, I clocked in at 7, and pulled out of the yard a little after 8.30, like 8.32. So, get the pre-trip done, figure out, uh, where I'm going, count the trusses to make sure I have them all, and then get them loaded, get the runners underneath them, get them strapped down, signs, flags, all that stuff, and make sure I had my hangers, which we're going to jump to here in a second. That's it, putting signs on, not that interesting. We also got to get my oversized mirror put in its bracket. <coughs> it's actually one of the things we do on purpose is we shift that load so it sits on the trailer so you have a clear line of sight down the driver's side of the truck and then we just have to have one mirror extension on the passenger side. It also saves on having to runner the whole load because if it hung off both sides of the trailer we'd have to put boards underneath the entire length of the trusses to keep those webs and uprights from getting hung up on the board. Had to double check my uh, paperwork number and how many hangers I needed. Then we just gotta find the box and put them in the truck and we'll get rolling. Phone says it's 11 degrees. Boy, is it beautiful out. Got you on the underside of my hat this time. See if maybe that gives a little bit better perspective. Already backed into where I need to be.
double check the lands, make sure I'm at the right place. So we just gotta unstrap and get them off here. As I was saying before I got my uh, phone call, pretty gorgeous day out. We're right where I want to drop them at, so we just need to wind up the straps and get them dropped off. I had to double check where I was because apparently what Google says this road is right here uh, is the old name. And they apparently had to change the name of the road. For some reason that I don't know. And this is actually a new enough subdivision that uh, the part of the road I'm on doesn't even show up on Google, so. GPS will get you close, but when you're dealing with new construction, it uh, sometimes takes a while for it to catch up. look inside the trusses. But my week, actually going pretty good this week. Stuff's come off the way it's supposed to come off. Haven't gotten stuck. Pretty good week. Actually, I had a little bit of snow. Yeah, between, between Jerome and Burley. Then by the time I got to the deck low exit, it was clearing back up. And now over here in eastern Idaho, blue skies. I thought the wind was supposed to be blowing a lot harder out here. At least that's what Alan was telling me this morning, but it's actually pretty calm at the moment. Kind of lazy last weekend. This weekend, I need to get some work done on my snowplow. If I drag my feet too much more, there won't be any snow to play with.
It's salt and mag chloride dust from the uh, ice melt treatment the uh, highway department uses. I'm sure that's good for you. And yes, I leave my lights on when I'm unloading. Even with the truck off. It's not off long enough for it to drain the battery any. And depending on where you're going, like if you go up to Haley or something. Haley, Bellevue, Shoshone. All those places they want you to run lights on anyways, so. I usually forget to turn them off when I get in the yard and then get about 10 feet away from the truck and go, hey, yeah, the lights are on. I try to keep the camera out of the sunlight. Super penetrating oil. Actually, use it to spray my locks, and then I spray the slide or the tandem slide, keep them oiled up a little bit. Makes everything work a little better. Especially with the road salt and the mag chloride really kind of gums up them tandems from sliding. And then you get the dirt and the mud slung up in the locks and this kind of frees them up a little bit. That middle one's jammed up so tight. I've Tried beating it loose a few times, but she's just stuck stuck. Just kind of helps everything work a little better. I don't do the whole length, but I do a heavy coat there in the first few feet. Not so bad when you're on dry ground. If it's icy, they don't want to slide. tires will just lock up and 
just drag the trailer instead of stretching them back out where they need to be. And that saves wear and tear on all this stuff. Now we're ready to unload. There's the uh Reusable sticky mount. I'm going to turn you off so I can blow my. Lock everything in just because we're on a little bit of an angle. before I try to slide them. I do turn the truck off quite a bit, save on the idle time. We'll get it so them steel wheels are touching the ground. off here. We are at a little bit of a side hill and apparently they're just going to stay put. Give them a little bit of a bump. in right now. Lock everything back into place.
Well, that's going to do it for this one. The uh, camera battery died while you were clipped to my hat, so I got you back in the little charge port so I can film my outro. Hope you enjoyed a uh, little trip, day trip with me. That's kind of what I do pretty much all day, all trusses. As always, click like if you enjoy the content, subscribe if you want to see more, and we'll catch you in the next one.